One of the largest restaurant chains to open in the first half of the 20th century started by accident. In the late 1920s, a lumberman from Houston, Texas named J.C. Stedman found himself with leftover supplies. So he began building little neighborhood groceries, laundries, and also arranged to construct nice little cottages to be used as offices. That was until one day it was suggested that he turn one of the buildings into a cozy diner. That diner was named Toddle House, and the story goes the little buildings were meant to be transportable. That's when a young kid was watching one of them loaded onto a truck. It wobbled back and forth, and the kid said, look how that little house toddles. Stedman was standing nearby and realized he had the perfect distinctive name for his restaurants. Stedman didn't stay in Houston, but rather headed off to Memphis where he partnered with the owners of Britling Cafeteria to build his Toddle House restaurants. While in Memphis, Stedman was approached by Fred Smith in the early 1930s, who showed an interest in buying the chain of restaurants. The name Fred Smith might sound familiar, and that's because this Fred Smith started Dixie Greyhound Bus Lines, which became a part of the National Greyhound Bus Fleet. The other Fred Smith was his son, and he would later go on to found Federal Express. As soon as Smith met with Stedman, he wanted in. In 1932, Smith bought the company and became the Tottle House president. He also moved their headquarters to Memphis. All Tottle House restaurants were built to be exactly the same. The tiny brick cottages were painted white and they had a blue roof. Inside, there were no tables, just a row of tin stools at a stainless steel counter. Everything inside the restaurant was gleaming steel or white tile to emphasize cleanliness. Within the tiny kitchen space, there was a fryer, an oven, and a broiler. On the counters were toasters and a coffee maker, and all things needed to dish up some delicious food. From scrambled eggs and pecan waffles to their world-famous hamburger, Tottle House's reputation was growing, and so was the number of locations. In 1946, Tottle House created the Harlem House for black customers who were not otherwise welcome at the original restaurants. Eventually, there were 12 of these restaurants across the Memphis area. One interesting thing about Tottle House was they had no cash register. Instead, the business operated on the honor system. Standing by the front door was a steel and glass box called the auto cashier, and customers simply paid their bill by dropping in their money as they left. And there were also signs that made it very clear that there was no tipping allowed. By the 1950s, they had grown to 200 locations across 90 cities. But by the early 1960s, changes were on the horizon for Tottle House. Starting in 1961, Dobbs House, which was another Memphis-based company that had its own nationwide chain of diners, bought the Tottle House chain for $18 million. Dobbs not only operated the Dobbs House chain, but they also had the Steak and Eggs kitchen chain, and also handled the catering for most of the country's airlines, which was also a booming industry in the 1960s. Tottle House began to decline after this point. Due to Dobbs already having a large footprint in the food industry, Tottle Houses were either converted over to Dobbs Houses or Steak and Eggs Kitchens. Other locations were closed down and the chain slowly began to disappear. That was until the 1980s, when another company bought out Dobbs. Carson's, known for their department stores in the Midwest, made an attempt to revive the Tottle House name, which by 1984 had only 11 restaurants remaining. 
By 1987, Carson's had 40 title houses open, with many of them in Florida. There were big plans that called for nearly 500 by the early 1990s, with at least 50 of them expected to be in Florida. These new title house restaurants were bigger than their predecessors, with 64 seats, although they were still arranged around a counter. The menu itself also remained pretty much the same, with only a few modest updates. Things were looking up for Tottle House, but as with many restaurants, hard times are never far off. This was certainly true for Carson's, which by 1988 was struggling to see any profits from their restaurant operations. So Carson's decided to sell the Tottle House chain to Diversified Hospitality Group of Milford, Connecticut, which ended up liquidating the restaurants. For fans of the tiny restaurants, many of the original locations lived on as new businesses. Some were hot dog stands, while others became new short order style restaurants. One other notable connection to the Tottle House story was the creation of Waffle House. One of the founders, Joe Rogers, was a regional manager for Tottle House in the 1950s, just prior to opening up his first Waffle House. This tiny restaurant has some big connections throughout its history. Let me know in the comments your own memories of Tottle House. Maybe you were one of the lucky ones to try their world famous hamburger. If you enjoyed this video, check out the description for links that help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.